Okay, up and running. All right, so I've got a few things already on the board, but the first problem should be familiar to you now since this is the fifth day. And if you've done five days in a row of these, then I hope they, these problems mean a whole lot more to you now than they did prior to that work. All right, so I decided to look at the end behavior first, which is x times, I'm going to square the three, so 9x squared times x, 9x to the third times minus x to the third gives me that. And that term is the most important term when we start putting big numbers into the polynomial if we were to multiply it out. So minus 9x to the sixth, right, even exponent. So end behavior should look like that. All right, so let's get our x is 5, and that's a cubic root, and it's got a sign change of 5. Negative 4, no, no sign, oops, dot, no sign change. And at 0, it's to the first power, so we get a linear a root at 0. All right, and we know that if we put a big number in, put a million in, you get a positive, you get a positive, you get a negative. And so that confirms that we're heading to negative infinity as our x's get big, 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 big. Cubic root, linear, quadratic. Okay, so we've kind of come at it from two perspectives. So it looks good, and I want to be greater than or equal to. So I see negative 4 will work. Union, 0 to 5. Okay, so we'll put it in interval notation. Those are the x values that get us positive y values all the way in this area there. All right. And also that gets us a zero. So let's do a little graphing. Let's do the cosine first. We'll do the x, y in that order. And the cosine is really about x values, horizontal um, lengths in the unit circle uh, of the triangles drawn. So I just put this on the side. Just to show you what X stands for, X stands for an angle. And in this case, it's represented in terms of circumference of the circle. And so there's your 30 degree, 45, 60, 90. And uh, what happens with the X values? First one, the second one, the third one, the fourth one, and the fifth one, there is no X, right? So we're starting at a max. This is the maximum width, one. And it's a root three over two width. If I draw that triangle, that length of one just got smaller. If I do a 45, the length gets smaller still. If I do 60, the lengths get smaller, but they're still positive. So boom, boom, we're looking most succinctly, letting x equals zero. We've talked about the multiplier, two pi over two, in this case, is the period. So pi, hopefully you can see if you put pi in for x, we've gone around the circle once, and we've got to get our midline, the max and min, and what do we got? We got seven for the midline, going up eight, so that's 15, going down eight, so negative one. So there's our range, negative one to 15, and uh, I guess I should put in 15 here, and 15 here. And we can check it with pi over 2. Should get us negative 1. Let's do it quickly. Let's substitute pi over 2 in. Oh, I see the 2's cancel. 3.14 radius lengths. There's one radius length. There's 2. There's 3. 3.14 takes me to the left side of the circle, which has a width of negative 1. And so I'm going to multiply 8 times negative 1 which is negative eight plus seven, also negative one. All right, so, so much for that one. Sine function, well, if we're looking at the circle, sine function measures height, heights go up to one, midline is zero, negative one, and heights are midline, so they're gonna equal nine when X is equal to three. So we might as well start the midline and do what? Walk around the circle. Do, 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 right? The heights are going up. Not the greatest picture, but we'll live with it. And so um, x minus 3 over 4 is equal to 2 pi. 
That's one revolution. And I think we can see that we're going to end up at 3 plus 8 pi, because the period can easily be found by 2 pi divided by the multiplier. I'll let you think about what that multiplier is. Hope you're saying, what am I multiplying x by? Hope you're saying, hope you're saying 1 fourth. So therefore, that's where that comes from. 2 pi divided by a fourth, 8 pi. And that gets us 9. And you should plug it in to see how that works. The threes cancel, 8 pi divided by 4, 2 pi, go J. And uh, now we've got uh, all kinds of nice uh, symmetry here. Right, so 3 plus 4 pi would take us also to 9. And 3 plus 6 pi should take us to uh, negative 1. You can plug those numbers in to see if I've made any mistakes. Hopefully not. Domain. All right, so hopefully we're getting to the point where we're looking for critical numbers. So x plus 5, x minus 5. Critical numbers are negative 11, negative 5, and 5. Let's just put a number line there. And so can I use numbers less than negative 11? Nope. That would that would not be uh, okay for this square root function. Can I use negative 11? Okay, so I'm getting rid of that. Can I use negative 11? Yeah, sure. I mean, square root is zero, right? Square root of zero is zero, because zero times zero is zero. Yes, negative 11 works. Does negative five work? Absolutely not. Can't divide by zero. Can't divide by zero. So there we have negative 11 to negative five. Union negative five to five if we're writing an interval notation and five to infinity. Yeah, you're pausing the video, right? I'm just marching along. Yeah, even if you just watch, you probably get enough practice after having done these four or five times now. Come on, science card, behave. There we go. Let's get make sure this is top of the board. It is. All right, so. We'll take care of our y-intercept immediately, three. Uh, let's make that three. Zero gets us three. X-intercepts at three as well. So there's an x-intercept at three. We've got to factor now, x squared minus one, x plus one, x minus one. We get sign changes all over the place. If I put a big number in, if you're looking at other videos, they're probably talking about bottom heavy. I'm not a fan of that language. I don't know what a bottom heavy number is. I know what's trying to be communicated is that the rate of change of x over x squared, uh, x squared dominates eventually. It doesn't dominate between 0 and 1 locally. If I put a half in for x, right, then the numerator is actually bigger than the denominator. And, but as soon as I get past the number 1, well, let's put 10 in. We've got 10 over 100. Let's put 100 in. We've got 100 over four zeros. And that's 10,000, right? If you put a, you keep doing that, you add one zero in the numerator and two in the denominator. The denominator is going up 10 times as fast as the numerator. Eventually, it gets so big that it's not fitting into the numerator much at all. So that's why we're getting y equals zero, and that's why people say bottom heavy. Again, I don't think that necessarily um, communicates what's going on numerically. What's going on numerically is once you get past one, one more time, this is outpacing that number significantly. And as the denominator gets bigger than the numerator, the fraction gets smaller. All right, so we got an asymptote at one and negative one. Looks like I got to move this to the other side. That's going to get in the way of negative one, too. X equals negative one. Why don't I just say the y intercept? We call that, uh, let's just say it's zero comma three over here. I won't label it. Okay, so there's my x equals one. It's the only x intercept is right here. So, and we know we have a big time positive number when I put in, you know, a million minus three divided by a million plus one, I got a positive number. So this, I guess x intercept over here, three zero, let's show those. So we have something that's gonna look like this. And you can check, you know, check this out by plugging a four in. You're going to get a small value out, positive value. Four minus three is one. Four plus one is five. Four minus one is three. 
Okay, so it's small, it's 115, but as I put bigger and bigger numbers in, it's going to zero. So over here, what we have is the limit. Let's call this f of x, yes. As x goes to one from the right, four, three, two, one point, uh, one, right? F of x is producing numbers headed towards negative infinity. Then we get a sign change. So this is going to be going down. So it's going to be going up over here. And probably symmetrical, but I don't know. I might have to examine that further. But the limit as x goes to 1 from the left, negative 1, 0, 0 0.9, 0 0.9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, It's going to make a really small denominator. And so f of x is heading towards positive infinity. So the limit of f of x as x goes to 1 does not exist. I don't know what I'm doing here. All right, no more x-intercepts, so it's got to do this. But let's confirm it. Why don't we pick negative 1? Uh, now let's, let's, put, let's put negative 10. And see that we're still a negative number. But it could be small. Minus 10, minus 3, minus 13, minus 10 plus 1, negative 9, minus 10, minus 1, negative 11. Okay, we can see a negative answer, three negatives. And the denominator is significantly bigger than the numerator, red than the zero. So what am I less than zero? Uh, negative infinity to negative one, negative infinity to negative one, union one to three. Union one to three. And that's when f of x is less than zero. All right, domain and range. Yeah, no points of discontinuity. The domain is all numbers except negative one and one. And the range, well, that would be tough. I'm not going to do the range. Well, I, I'm pretty sure that's probably symmetric, but not 100%. So without a little more look on my part right now, I don't want to make a mistake. So um, let's go after the next rational function. Now, if you were to step back and really look at this graph from a mile away, you wouldn't be able to see much difference between negative 8 and negative 3. So you would really get a graph that's going up at 4 to 1 and one that's going up at 1 to 1. This is a great place for Loki Tau when you were taking calculus. I know you use Loki Tau, but the question is, do you understand it? It's not the best drawing for me, but I'll use this one here. All right, so that's a 4 to 1 rate. And this is rise over run, and they share this rise over run right there is a one to one. This one is a four to one, roughly a four to one, right? And so if I take those rates, the division of the run divides out, and we hopefully can start to see the four to one ratio that's happening when I put really big numbers. I'm getting a four to one ratio. Asymptote at three. X intercept at two. Y intercept at positive eight thirds. Oh, okay, so that's not too bad. Cool. And oh, that's what that's going to look like. Okay. Uh, domain and range. Domain, I can use everything except three. Range, I can get everything out of this except the number four. These numbers. I'm going to make it so that I cannot actually get this to equal four. Let's see if we can see why. Numerically, four times x minus three. Well, that gives me four x minus eight on the left, and that gives me four x minus 12 on the right. I'm sorry, but I don't think those lines ever intersect. They look like they're parallel. All right, there's enough practice on that. We'll talk more about them extensively in class. And folks who are not in the class that might be looking on, um, I, I made a YouTube channel during the pandemic because I couldn't figure out how to upload um, things to a, a program we had called Canvas. I guess that's gotten pretty popular. Uh, it took me forever to upload things. So by creating this YouTube channel, it took me two minutes to upload a video. Well, that was big time important to me because I had five sections, really three classes, but within each class I had such bifurcation in terms of levels of ability. I was really teaching five. All right, so 
let's see where we're at. Piecewise function, but let's graph this really quickly so we can see what's going on. Five, nine. I'm increasing on the left, decreasing on the right. So the piecewise function, let's get Alfred Hitchcock up increasing. So I'm going to write 2x minus 5 plus 9. And those x values, when I'm to the left of 5, less than 5, and I'm decreasing at uh, minus 2, x minus 5 plus 9, four x values greater than or equal to 5. You can put the equal on either one of those. So what am I less than 3? Well, I kind of see 3 is 6 units. Right? And I'm changing by two every every uh, time I put in x value, but I'm going down two. So I got it down three times. So probably eight without, probably eight and three back of five, two. Those are probably the numbers I'm going to get. But let's uh, do it out just to make sure. Two, x minus, I don't have to make sure. I'm going to have to make the video again if I'm wrong. So there's your six, there's your three, there's your eight. Oh. Okay. And if you add two plus eight, and divide by two, you get five, which is three. So now that we've got uh, the critical numbers of two and eight, and uh, let's plug in something and see if it works. We want to be less than, so it should be true, false, true. Uh, it should be true, false, true. I should have gotten one more number over here. Uh, so let's put zero in. So we're looking at five, negative 10, so negative one, right? And so three is between nine and negative one, right? So our answer should be one of the x's should be between zero and five, yay. And one of the x's should be, you know, if this is zero, negative one, then it's also 10, negative one. And so I should have an answer between five and 10, yay. And I want to be less than. So that's actually going to be these two branches. Well, I missed where I was. I should have been at two and at eight. I think those numbers are going to get me answers smaller than nine, three and below. Kind of got lost in what I was talking about there. All right, so let's look at uh, three ways we could write this sinusoid quickly. Uh, let's take the one in the textbook first. One of the textbook would talk about uh, the midline. Well, I got to get another value over here. How about we do uh, 1975? Uh, how many do we want? Let's go from 12 to 20. Keep those numbers smaller. I like different numbers so you can really see years to angles and then angles to amounts. So a textbook would probably still start with the midline, of course. So what's between 12 and 10? 16. And we're going down for cosine um, 1900 and 1975, 75 years, gets us 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, 5 pi. So that could be reduced. That could be reduced, but we won't. We'll just do x minus 1900. And we'll show you how that works. Drop in 1900, you get zero. Cosine of zero is one. Negative four times one, negative four plus 16, there's your 12. Okay? Um, if you wanted to write with an addition, you could have built this off of pi because pi gets us a minimum and we're at a minimum. So if I wanted to do it with pi, I could have done 16 plus 4 cosine 5 pi over 75 x minus 1900 plus pi. Let's see how that works. Drop 1900 in. You get a zero, but zero plus pi is pi. What's the cosine at pi? Negative one. Negative one times four minus four plus 16 is 12. I could have done it as a sine curve. 16 plus four. And when are we a minimum on the sine curve? Well, let's put a sine curve over here. Minimum occurs at three pi over two. So you could have said 16 plus four sine. I feel like I should at some point Pi over 15, okay? And um, we can see that one pi, two pi, two and a half. Uh, you should be able to see how that works there. Um, two pi, so this would be 30 units. This would be 30 units. This would be 15. There's your 75 units accruing. Uh, don't get carried away here, coach. 
Just write the answer. X minus 1900 plus, what did I say, 3 pi over 2? All right, so drop 1900 in. That cancels. Where's 3 pi over 2 at the bottom? What's the height at the bottom? Negative 1 times 4, negative 4 plus 16, 12. All right, try to keep this manageable in terms of time. Day five, hopefully you're following quickly. We'll do the rules of logs here first, and then we'll see where those rules come from. So 9 25 means that I could have said ln of 9 minus ln of 25, because when you subtract, we're going to put this in E notation over here, and we're going to be doing a subtraction of exponents. 9 could have been written as 3 squared minus 25 could have been written as 5 squared, and that could be written as 2 ln of 3 minus 2 ln of 5, and we're going to see that materialize over here. So that's 2.2 minus 3.2. So I'm getting minus 1. Okay, let's find out why. 9, 3 squared divided by 5 squared can be written approximately as, I should have looked approximations, e to the 1.1 squared over an e to the 1.6 squared. I hope you can see 2 L and a 3. I hope you can see 2 L and a 5. And I hope you can see a subtraction of exponents. So this is where the rules of logarithms are coming from. Remember what LN is about. It's about the exponential activity on top of E. We're isolating the exponential activity on top of E. We're describing it. We're nailing it. 2.2 minus 3.2. I'm going to go with negative 1. You can put it in a calculator, and you'll find that you're within a tenth of a decimal place, probably. All right. So sketching LN, which is a special case log, instead of uh, using the 0, 1 base, I'm going to uh, look at the LN of 3. Otherwise, it's the same. Okay. So x minus 3 means that the graph's going to appear on the right side. A minus sign means it's going to actually uh, be the inverse of decay because I could have taken this minus sign and changed e to 1 over e and made that positive. All right. If instead of x minus 3, I had 3 minus x, if I had that, graph would have appeared over here as a reflection around x equals 3. All right. So let's keep it as x minus 3. So that gets us our asymptote. Next, I'm going to make this a 1. Minus 5, ln of 1, plus 4, which happens to equal 4. I hope you can see why. E to the 0 is 1, and we're looking for exponents on top of E. The exponent that makes that quantity is a 0. You should be able to see why now. So if you make this a 1, you're always going to get the constant. So let's put this here. With the number 4, I get a 4. Okay? Um, let's put a 6 in. 6 minus 3. And a 6 is to the right of 4. Keep that in mind. 3. What's the L in a 3? 1.1. So that's minus 5.5 plus 4, which is minus 1.5. Minus 1.5 is, is below that 4. And 6 is to the right of that 4. So let's put it here. 6 gets us, what did I say, minus 1.5? And we can find more values, right? But that's basically the shape. And this thing eventually goes down forever, but so slowly. Oh, my God, so slow, slowly, slowly. All right, good enough. Last one. I didn't put a problem up, so let me put a problem up. Uh, keep in mind that 30 degrees gets us 0.87 for a width. 45 degrees gets us 0.71, 60 degree triangle, one half in the unit circles, right? So that's 0.87, that's 0.5 decimally, that's 0.71, that's 0.71 decimally, one half, 0.5 exact, 0.87 for the 30, 60, 90, or the 60, 30, 90. All right. So let's do the sign 17 pi over 3. Just throw something up. All right, so looking at that, I would say 18 pi over 3. I know where that is. 17 is one less, so I'm guessing minus 1, 
we three over two, but let's take our time. Let's get a circle. All right, and we're looking at 18 pi over three is over here. That's six pi. 17 is one less. And I know that I'm gonna get a half there. So a good drawing gets us a good answer. That's a half, that's one, and that's negative root three over two. And that's what I thought it would be. And I'm hoping some of you can start doing those in your head as well. All right, out of breath here. See you in class in about six days. <laughs>